Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the wait for Godot just got one step shorter. That is Godot 4.5, specifically because we just got the release of Godot Engine 4.5 Dev 4. Now, the dev releases you can think of as pre-beta. These are the ones that add new features to the engine. Uh, we will get probably seven or eight dev releases, at which point in time we will go into beta, then we will get a feature freeze, and then we will hopefully get, you know, Godot 4.5 release. So these are not intended to be used in production. Uh, uh, they are very much dev uh, oriented new features that may or may not actually make it there be dragons you may have some problems but there are some really nice new features here by the way this demo level is from the star nova bundle which is still running i will have some details on that in just a second the link for it will be down below uh, you can get this and four other godot assets completely modular as part of that bundle for just 9.99 so pretty cool environment it also lets us showcase a couple of the new capabilities of this release the first one we've got uh let's just say it's not not as impressive as you might think because it, I'm running on Windows and this feature is in Mac. But uh, on Linux and Windows in previous versions, we now have this new 3D game window. It gives you the ability um, to actually run your game, sort of like what you could do in the world of uh, Unity for years now. You can actually interact with things, so you could go into to input mode, pick an object in the world, and actually see it up over here. Really powerful new feature. The problem is this did not work on Mac OS. Now it does. Now the way they implemented it was a little bit different than the way it's been done on Linux and Windows. It uses IPC to communicate to the window and they may actually port the Windows and Linux way to going with the Mac way as well. So we got that new functionality there, which is nice. The next thing we've got here, this one actually requires a restart, but you've come in here to project settings and let's bring this over onto the screen like so. Uh, then what you're wanting to do is come down to the rendering section and go to reflections. And now we have specular occlusion. By uh, in 4.4, your equivalent results would have been uh, at, with like what you've seen so far with it off. It does require a reset. So we'll go ahead and start that one back up. So here we go. And now let's go back to full screen because I can. All right, so what you will notice here, reloaded, your lighting is different. And you have a choice between, so if you do not like the way that this changed, uh, you, you don't need to use this. But what it is essentially doing is causing the specular lighting uh, from ambient lights. It wasn't being properly occluded before. Uh, so on metallic or reflective surfaces, uh, they were, um, there wasn't an economic way of doing the occlusion of that light on it uh, for ambient light sources. Now it is in place. So uh, you may like the results, you may not. It, it kind of comes down to you. Uh, but yeah, definitely a nice new feature. Uh, and again, completely toggleable. So if you don't want to use it, once again, just come back here. Uh, why do you always open off screen? Let's bring this back over here. And then what you are looking for is specular uh, over here, occlusion. And you can turn it on, turn it off if you want it. If you don't want it, completely optional to you. We got another neat ability here. Let's go here to the root and we will add in a label. All right, so here we go. Typical label, we'll stick here. So uh, let's just put some text in here right now. All right, so here we go. So here you've got your text. Let me just zoom in on it like so. I didn't mean to do an enter, so let's get rid of the enter. All right, so text in the world. Previously, if you wanted to do uh, stacked effects, you really couldn't. You had to duplicate your text and make it work otherwise. Now you've got the ability to actually stack these things. So what you do is, let's just scroll this over here, label settings, go over here, label settings, open it up, and now what you're gonna see here is you now have this stacked effect option. So what are the two effects? You got outlines and you've got shadows. So go ahead, let's add an outline here. So let's do a black outline around our text, like so, so let's do five pixels here, and now you can actually do another one here. So let's do this one as, um, I don't know, let's go red, like so. And then you can just go ahead here and put that one out of the outside one. So you can do these stack effects now. On top of that, you've also got the ability to stack shadow effects, as many as you wish. So here we go. Uh, let's make that one a little bit bigger. So here is a shadow effect if you want to put it in. I don't know why this one is I'm not getting the uh, the mouse control that I expect. I don't know what's going on here, but let's go ahead and change this to, to 10 manually. So there you can see, you can upset, you can have these multiple effects in place. Again, if I wanna do another stacked color, make this one a little bit lighter, like so, and make this even bigger, like so, and then offset that by 15. 
Boom. So you can now do multiple text uh, stacking effects between outlines and shadows. It's going to be a somewhat niche new ability, but it is definitely a nice one. And then this one is probably my favorite new ability of all of the things here. This is on the script side of things. So here, let's go ahead and attach a script to this guy. Here we go. So we got our new script. And let's say I was exporting a variable. So right now, I want to do this, uh, my var, like so. Well, you can't do this right now. It's not allowed. Previously, not at all allowed. Now what you can actually do is export out a variant, uh, if you spell it right, like, like so. And what you'll notice here is my var is now available like this. And what you can now do, since it's a variant, you never used to be able to export variants. Now I could come in and say, okay, what is my variant? I can now say, okay, pick a type for it. So I say, okay, this is a string and then my string value. Now, I don't know if there's any particular downsides to this. This does seem like a kind of dangerous ability because you can now expose anything out and turn it to anything by the editor, but that's kind of the nature of a variant. So I don't know that there's a downside here. I think there's all upside here other than it maybe encourages um, you to expose properties that should have probably been better defined, but that is up to the programmer. It's kind of, you're, they're giving you more rope. You choose to hang yourself or not. But I think this is a powerful new ability. Uh, it makes it so you can literally expose variants out to the properties window or the inspector window. Uh, and I can see quite a few uses for that. And then I can also think of a few abuses. If you can think of a super abuse, do let me know in the comments down below. All right, so that's it for the hands-on portion. There's actually some more to this release. It's actually one of the biggest dev releases yet. By the way, again, that bundle that we used in in this demo, everything you saw here in the 3D world, this is one of five such environments, uh, completely modular, by the way. So if you want, uh, the uh, all the art assets are available. So here you can see, for example, if you need a book or decor and so on, all available here, uh, available as prefabs as well. So they're pre-textured, good to go, drop into your world. So really cool modular kits. Those are available as part of the Star Nova bundle. Big thing I wanna point out to you here, Price, $49.99. Do not pay that. Use the code SN40. When you buy it, it'll knock it down to $9.99. And it's a really cool bundle. Uh, you've got, again, uh, a variety of different environments, all modular in nature, uh, worth checking out. And if you do buy that, it does help support me. All right, so here we are on the Dev 4.5 release notes. Let's find out what's going on here. Um, sorry, it's Godot 4.5 Dev 4 release notes. So we got one thing. We're going to come back to it in just a second. So this was a secondary uh, announcement right here. So uh, support for web support for .NET. We'll get back to that in just a second, uh, but they do have that tentatively running right now. That's been one of the biggest limitations of .NET or C Sharp use inside of Godot is supporting web platforms. So it does look like they are making progress there. Uh, as mentioned earlier on, uh, you've got the embedded window support on now available. The game window here is now Mac specific. It did not work previously. Uh, so in order to do this, uh, it, it works quite differently from the way Windows and Linux work. Those basically use Windows hacks to make this happen. Uh, Mac OS uses an interprocess or IPC um, communication approach where the fairing buffer is sent to the game process, which performs the off-screen rendering to the editor window. Input events are also sent from the editor to the game process and vice versa. Um, the approach may be ported to Windows and Linux later in the future as it would help to support, uh, help to improve the reliability of the game window embedding. So the short of it is right now uh, that you can now use the game preview window on Mac as well as Linux, Linux and Windows. And the way they implemented it, they may like it better than the way they did it for other platforms. So they might standardize that one. Another one we have is physics interpolation has been moved to scene tree. Previously, physics interpolation was done on the server side. If you do not know, Godot is basically built out of a bunch of low level servers that do things like input handling, physics, graphics, and so on that then communicate to the front end, which is like the Godot editor, which is composed of at the core, the scene tree. The scene tree, of course, being this guy over here and you can't really get access to that uh, so with the interpolation was done on the server side you couldn't actually interact with the interpolation results interpolation being um, the smoothing between two physics calculations to make your physics your 3d physics work better so now it has been uh, made to work on the editor side of things gives you a little bit more access and other results here. Interestingly enough, this came from Godot 3.x and was ported forward. Interesting there. 
and also gonna give you uh, more better logic for working with 3D physics interpolation on your project. This should have no effect on you, which is nice in terms of just, it's just new feature and functionality uh, that came from Godot 3.x. Uh, here we've also got the export I was talking about earlier on, so you can export variants out. I do think that that is super powerful. Um, it looks like every time you, uh, you change the value, it immediately kills whatever the result is. So if you've defined a uh, really well-established array or dictionary of values, uh, you're gonna kill whatever you put in it. It's one of those things to be aware of, but it is a powerful feature. I do see how it could potentially be abused. So again, I'm curious what you think of this. Uh, it's probably my favorite feature here, but at the same time, it's probably the most abusable feature. And then we got the stackable outlines. We showed that in action earlier on for both doing uh, outlines and for shadows. And then here we've got uh, some direct examples side by side of the speculative conclusion in action. So uh, again, they should. this is causing it to not get lights, uh, lighting reflections on certain surfaces from ambient screens when it is enabled. And here you can see the results, disabled, enabled. It's very minor but you can definitely see some, some difference. And then here again, and then here probably most pronounced. So there. So this is again, toggleable. If you like the old version better, you can turn it off and completely ignore it if you wish. And then on top of that, there were 105 contributors sub submitting 261 fixes in this release. The interactive change log is available here as well. And it's available for download on multiple platforms. And then the other announcement here, this one came uh, from the Godot Con that's going on in Boston. Uh, and it is all about uh, porting over to get .NET working inside of um, web builds of Godot. And then they tried various different ways. .NET.js didn't work. Native ahead of time, LLVM didn't work. Tried statically linking mono, it didn't work. And then uh, here's how they ultimately did make it work. Details here. So it must match the WASM feature supported by the Godot template uh, and more details on it here. So uh, they have made it work. There are some limitations on how they made things work. So if you wanna get into the details of exactly how they made it work, this blog post is available. I will link it down below or I'll link it in the linked article down below anyways. So getting closer. Uh, so this is a work in progress, but on the bright side, uh, we are getting there. And then uh, there are some DLLs that are being included in your pack file. So it is going to make your project bigger. So again, c .net support on the web and file compression are two important features that will come to the platform. These features will push the limits of what can be done by Godot users on the web. I hope that you are excited as we are. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is another part of this ongoing development. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Godot 4.5 Dev 4. Let me know what you think of the new feature. It's a pretty packed release, to be honest. There's, there's quite a bit in this one. I think it's probably the biggest of the dev releases, which again, I have covered every single one of them, and I will link to those as well if you want to learn more about what to expect from Godot 4.5 when it ships, shaping up to be a pretty nice release. I'm curious, what do you think? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.